All right, guys. <clears throat> Here we are eating sopa. <laughs> I regret not making one now. <laughs> yeah. So we're here on the twentieth floor of House of Rest. <laughs> um, got this gentleman here. I don't know if he wants to say his name. He's on the incognito. Solid. <laughs> Brother Joseph and Eduardo. You can see part of his face. There he is. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> All right. So yeah, there it is. That is the star of David in these and then a lot of cowboys. <laughs> yeah, so we are, um, it's kind of cold, man, so we're eating these sopas. And um, the women are doing stuff. Well, your, your women's at home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but our women are doing stuff. Is she in the office? She with Andrea. Oh, okay. Figure, come in here. I don't know what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about something. <laughs> That's all I know. Talk about our Bible study, man. It's pretty good. Romans. Yeah, Book of Romans. It's good, man. And I, I think it's it's just going to get better. It's pretty. Um, yeah, it's better. <laughs> Bring that one closer. Like let me right here, maybe. Yeah, that's good. You can really hear the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> you can taste it. You can like, sound effects. Look, brother. There it is. This moment brought to you by. <laughs> so by this time, guys, there wasn't going to be any devotional. It's already 10:30, so I'm like, you know what? We're going to do a video, and um, and talk about some stuff. You know, and um, I don't know what to talk about, <laughs> but something will happen. That's all I know. Did you watch the, the, the Bible study? Not yet. I'm gonna watch oh, it. you haven't seen it? Yeah. yeah. Like said, uh, you can know about like, scripture and you know all this, like 10,000 things, but can you live at least five? Yeah. At least the Ten, yeah. The ten Commandments, can you at least live at five? He said, um, well, your, uh, your walk gotta be louder than your talk. Like you were saying, um, today you're telling the, um, well, just the theologians or the, the, the Jews, the Hebrews, you know all this, all that. Yeah. But like, you know, are you walking, are you living it? And you're talking about the circumcision too? But I think it's important, man, because I think that they say that churches in America are empty, emptying. Um, I don't believe that's necessarily true. I think that some churches are being empty, you know, but I think it, it, it all comes down to this is people are tired of, of talking and, and, and no walk. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. I don't necessarily think people hate Jesus. I, I think it's just the hypocrisy. Yeah. If you ask me, I don't, well, I mean, you're, you're fairly new in Christ. When did you surrender your life to the Lord? Uh, about two years ago. That's oh, new. Yeah. yeah. And I know a lot of that um, rejecting it was based off of people that I know in the church and how they acted when they, you know, came around family when they weren't. Yeah, I remember you shared yeah. that. Yeah, like I had a cousin. He he preached like crazy, and then he'd be the first one to show up to the party. Like, Where's the weed at? <laughs> Man. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, our our actions reflect on on the church as a whole. So. So so knowing that. Now that I know, I didn't know that of you. Were you just watching us at first, um, or did you did you say something different, or or did you think all Christians were like that? In the beginning, uh, like based off of my family, like I just assumed like all Christians were like that. Really? Yeah. But when I first came to House of Rest, I was watching um, everybody, everybody. I wanted to see who was being fake. You know, yeah. that, that was just naturally what I was looking for, just based off of my, my experience, you know. Mm -hmm. And I remember we had went on a fishing trip. Uh, I remember it was like Johnny was there, um, Armando was there. There was, there was a bunch of brothers there, and I was like, all right, I'm going to see who these guys really are today, you know. Who, who's <laughs> who's going who's gonna to get high when the pastor's not around? Who's cussing? Yeah. Who's drinking? Who's, but, like, 
it was it was like church on a fishing trip. Like these dudes were serious. Like yeah. brother Johnny was praying for the food. There was worship playing. Like I was like, these dudes are really really serious. You know? So I was like, okay, okay, like you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but I mean, imagine like they were different. They were cussing. They were smoking. That would have given. I would probably would. You would have never came yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. You know. So uh, that goes back to saying like our walk really needs to be speaking louder. Do you think so? Then, so then. You know, I'm always saying it. I'm always saying it. But I think that that is probably a really important thing right now. Because a lot of times people, back in the day, it was about, oh, knowing the Bible, knowing the Bible. But I think people need to see it yeah. to be convinced. Because yeah. what good is it knowing the Bible and not living different, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and it would be exhausting, man. Can you imagine having to wake up every day and be like, Okay, I gotta be a Christian today. Yeah, that'd be tiring, yeah. you know. Rather, than, that's that's when you're, you're trying to fix your outside before the inside, instead of allowing the inside and allowing God to grow you from the inside. Because what's eventually gonna happen is it's gonna come out mm -hmm. naturally. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And um, I don't know. I I just notice that a lot of times people assume that you are the way they've seen other Christians be. And, yeah. and that's sad. Yeah, I was actually talking with a coworker not long ago and uh, asked him if he goes to church. And he said, why go to church? You know, you know, you go to church and you're supposed to follow all these rules, but then the same people that are running the church are living uh, in a bad way. Yeah. So it's like, we're all going to hell anyways. But it's just like, are you gonna base your relationship with Christ off of somebody else's actions? You know, it's one of the, I like I like uh, always sharing about Saul because yeah. when he came, like he was always himself. <laughs> he never tried to put on a, a cover, a mask. He it's Saul. He came. They say, "Come as you are." Yeah. He came as he was, and then you start to see the change more and more and more, little by little. Well, he would just show up after church. Because <laughs> no, I would watch it online first before I uh, came. Is that why you always came on a perfect time? I I, I I came to tithe. That's down. right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So I would watch it online that's right. and get autographs. Oh, I mean, oh, oh that's right. <laughs> well, I'm talking about watching them, and then it's just good to lead some of my um, uh, um well, my family because uh, we listen to your music uh, back then, and then um, some of my my friends still, one of them just recently died, got shot in the head. Um, they we listen to the music together. They still listen to it. I mean, they're still in the world, so they still listen to it. So I was like, and and uh, and uh, your album, uh, Call to Reach the Masses. Oh yeah. And it has, I think. It's, a great album. I think everybody should listen to that one right there when you come to Christ. Um, especially if they know your music and get to know the other side. Besides. How'd you know about, about our church? Because um, of my music before? Yeah, with the music. I mean, you knew that there's like there's a church and then I look, like, looked it up and when you see YouTube or whatever and there's a church and you look and then it says the address and it's like, Modesto, oh, he's right here? And he's like, 7th Street? Yeah. I was like, let's go find out where the 7th Street is at. And I was like, man, it's down the block from my house. He's like, right there. So then I was like, oh, all right. So I get like to get like, you know, uh, my friends like kind of see, kind of. I was like, look, because we're like still fans, you know, like hey, we still like the music regardless, you know. They change your life, and it's like the, the, the other just you, the previous music to this. And I was like, look, okay, you got your autograph. Look, he sent you like you know, how to reach the masses. You're the masses. We're the masses. So you know, he's leading the way, like um, like trailblazing. You're being like. Says the scripture to be that, that 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 light, you know, and put it up in the mountain and yeah. lead the way. And when we we're speaking to you, you're like, "Well, I never left the homies. The homies left me. I just chose this route." And those who who like wanted to follow, and, and it, it's a bigger purpose for for Christ, like you were saying uh, today too. Like you always reverence God, regardless if you were slapping him with your yeah. speakers. And it's not, me too. I saw was that the respect. Like I raised a Catholic, but like even like right now too. Like you, you like when you walk in a building, you take your hat off too. Yeah. And all these different things were in service. There's different things that get instilled in you, even if they don't teach you like you were speaking about earlier today. Yeah. Um, even though they didn't teach you, there's some things that are already like morally just instilled in you. Yeah. Even though it's not a like government or whatever, there's things that are already morally just instilled in, like from birth. You already know, like you're talking about the kid still, he still wants to, why, why are you hiding? You don't even know what you got there. Nothing. So. Uh -oh. So I, I didn't realize you were watching it. So because I remember you always will show up right when service ended. Yeah, and he was always he was. dressed up. I know. Where were you going? Why are we always dressed up? Did you dress up to watch online? No. <laughs> 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 um, but, uh, it's just they say dress how you feel in that day, and if you feel good, 
You want to look good and like you know like I mean. So he would show up, guys. Give me a tithing envelope. Had me sign some autographs on some, <laughs> and then he'd leave. And I'm like, who was this guy? And he was talking like 50 miles an hour, and I, I caught half a quarter of what he said, and he'd leave. <laughs> and then Sharon would be like, who is that? I don't know. He just left an envelope. Yeah. That's all he, doing. he did that for like a, like months. Yeah. There you go. Forget about it. <laughs> I didn't know who he was, but he just came up talking like we knew each other forever. It was funny, man. <laughs> did you start going to Sunday service first or Wednesday? Cause he came so on a Sunday, Wednesday. I, I started watching um, the, the, on a the Sunday, Sunday service, but then you had like Bible studies and check it out, what yeah. it was about, and started showing up. You know, it was like, and I had seen it. Like, it was like you know, almost like twelve years, eleven years into it. So I'd seen like your past sermons and oh, okay. everything you've been doing. And I was like, oh, you've been living after eleven years. I mean, some people fake it, but it's like eleven years is a long time to be faking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, eleven years is a lot of faking. I mean, something's gotta happen. This Holy Spirit's gotta move. You know, yeah. so like after 11 years, let's, let's, let's go check it out. And then when you watch it online, yeah, there's still power in that, but you just feel it a lot more when you're in person, here there, in yeah. person. You feel the Holy Spirit, you feel the vibe, you feel the music, you know, the worship, you just feel it. it, it, it it's different. You That's have, what I tell you them. You have to be here to really I tell do. them to at least come once. Yeah. You suggest it. Would you say I the same thing? It. Yeah, I would. Yeah? yeah. I would. To come. Um... Because like what it's, it's a, there's a difference when you're behind the screen, and yeah. when you're here, when you're here, you get to meet the other people, you know, uh, make make relationships with them, and then there's just a big old difference when when you're behind the screen. It's it's not personal. Yeah, you know, you can't really make out with, 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 like talk to somebody in front of you and build a build a relationship. So. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a big old difference. Yeah, I mean, I, I know it's hard because some of you guys live out of state and it's hard, but you know, a lot of times you just gotta trust God and and the Lord give you the desires of your heart. You know, and there's places I've gone or places I've seen or things I've done that I never thought, but God made it happen. You know, He made it happen. You know, I remember Joseph would come on Wednesdays for Bible study, and he would just be super quiet. He'd just come sit down and then. Boom! Bounce out after like yeah. who's that guy? That's right. <laughs> Two of those guys on. I'm like screen. one's like and the other one's like. Well, is he a fed? What's going on? <laughs> Show your badge. Yeah. You did that for months. Yeah, I don't know. I just uh, I was like, all right, it's over. Like I, I didn't know, like you know. And, Hello, uh, shipping. Yeah, and then I finally uh, one day Armando caught me. I think maybe before service. Yeah. And he's like, hey, bro, can I pray for you? And I was just like, yeah, man. And that was it. That's cool. <laughs> First time you're a guest, second time you're a familia, that's it. And yeah. Like when you're here, you're family, it's fine. So, so these two gentlemen are always out uh, evangelizing. Um, Monday nights, uh, you guys know, on Monday nights, but other nights, other days too, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Tuesday, Merced, and usually we go out on Thursdays to different cities. Um, when, uh, right now they're doing the Bible college, but when they're not, then we're out and we gather up. We say, hey, at this location, this time, and we show up, and uh, we just... You know, obedient to what the calling says in the scripture to go out and preach the gospel to all creations or depending on the translation, creatures or creatures of the world. So to me it's just being obedient to what it says and we get we, we come here, we get poured into on Wednesday and Sunday, so we get the word but then we go and share it. We just don't keep it to ourselves. So it's like um uh what are the talents. You're yeah. giving us the, you know, the food and we go out there and he said, like, to check it too with scripture. It's on scripture, and you're up in the Bible, so you're going to scripture, it's there. Yeah. I mean, so even people want to debunk it or try to do that. Bro, I mean, these are years. This is the Bible's withstood, it's been put through trials, and all these people that are prestige, knowledgeable, these universities, these yeah. colleges, the History Channel, Time Magazine, anything you put up to it, they already have their, their, their try, their hit at it, and they're still there, still, still. Well, where's the work? What would you say if somebody's watching? And they've been watching us. They've seen some of the videos from from evangelizing, and they want to do it in their city. I mean, really, realistically, what's the f- first thing they should do? Pray. 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 pray or get yourself prayed up and count the cost of going out there because you're going to get persecuted. People are not going to be fans of uh, of things you know. They're, you might get flipped you off. You might have opposition. The enemy always comes in, in its own form of distraction, yeah. and, and it's trying to discourage you when you're doing it. But count the cost. I mean, you really got to put the armor of God on and be prayed up um, to 
as you've seen, like recently, some guy got shot in the head out there. So Phoenix. You need to, yeah, you know, let people know when you're going out there. And that's just to go in twos if you can. But if you want to go up out there yourself, you know, just count the cost. That some yeah. people, you know, if you're not a big, tall person like me and big or whatever, you know, some people <laughs> might want to all scar. You're like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just, uh, you know, get their thing. But greater is he who lives in us that of the world. So just count the cost and be prayed up and, you know, and then. Yeah. Try, if you if you have a your community people go out there as a group you know just go out there in numbers if you can but if you have that fire in you then just you know then just let the Holy Spirit work in you and just go go and do it be obedient what would you say um prayer for sure but definitely uh be bold and remember <coughs> who's in you because when you go out there there's gonna be times where like there was times where like somebody was out there by themselves mm. because people were running late. Or, or anything but yeah. you know and then when you're out there by yourself everything is trying to tell you not to be out there but somebody needs to be encouraged yeah you know and so if you gotta go out there and stand by yourself just go out there and do it do it do it lift up the name of Jesus and he'll do the rest you know you gotta remember who's who's the one living inside of you it's not about you you know you gotta die to I and, and just you know live so, that out so all of that stuff you're saying is like mentally, but what do you physically do? What what should they have? What should they do? What what the, what things do they need to start? Speaker. A speaker? Yeah. yeah. A speaker. Like so a Bluetooth can, speaker. Yeah, Bluetooth speaker. One that's uh, loud enough so they can hear it clear enough. So like a microphone? And, and, yeah, microphone and and make sure it's charged up. And if you can get a backup uh, power source because the batteries are... The, Depending which brand you give, yeah. um, they have a different lifespan depending how much volume you juice you're pumping out of that battery because you don't know where they're made at. So, or even if uh, you want to do it but you don't have the funds, I mean a thirty-five dollar megaphone. Yeah, so that's what I do. Know, Harbor Freight. That's what I do. When even one of the speakers, I Harbor Freight has a so megaphone. Yeah, megaphone, but for thirty, thirty-five dollars or something, you have to put those big old D batteries in them. Yeah. But it's loud enough. I mean, when our speakers fail, boom, or distraction comes because someone's off the mic or yeah. or their phone's not working or whatever. We still jump I noticed you guys have flags. I've never bought a flag. Where do you get the flags at? Like, what are where do they get the flags? Amazon, Amazon. eBay. Now what is it what? Timu or all those? I never looked down there. Oh, okay. yeah, so yeah, it, Amazon. You just go, yeah. Just what do you use for the poles? Uh, I go to Home Depot. Uh huh. Or you, if you don't have that, off. what I've done for that big old banner that uh, carries the Ten Commandments, I'll go to the dollar store and grab the broomsticks. Really? And I'll tape them or you nail them and put them together, <laughs> and then I'll get a zip ties. From either the dollar store or Harbor Freight and zip time. Look at that, guys. You yeah, can get so creative. That, yeah. yeah, I mean, will you, will we work with what we got. Those know? chrome ones, though, that's from Home Depot? What is it? No, the chrome ones I've got from uh, Home, yeah, Home Depot. Like what is it? It's a flagpole. Oh, it's a flagpole. Yeah, yeah. I, I've combined it, but like when I done the banner, I got two broomsticks to match up the size. Yeah. And then whatever. And if it gets any bigger, then I'll add another broomstick. <laughs> <laughs> The higher it goes. That's tight. And when Cell first started coming out, he came out with like a sign on the front. Oh, what I did, yeah. I got a, flags and a holster on the oh, side. Oh, yeah. I, I got I got holsters for the flags on the side. <laughs> um, they, they were meant for like, uh, uh, what do you call for, um, uh, they call it uh, horse seats and whatever. You know, when, when they were you know, doing parades, you put them on, on the horse, on the, on the yeah, saddle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're for the saddle, but you put them on your belt and you just shove them. So I had like two flags. <laughs> And then we had a come for Jesus or, or, or whatever. Because a lot of people ask us, like, where are you guys coming from? They want to know what church yeah. is it. Because, I mean, different churches were doing something. We were, especially out there on Halloween, there were churches having little candy giveaways and that type of stuff. Yeah. So we were distinguished. A bus driver pulled up, like, what church are you guys from? Because I'm driving around town and I'm seeing that there's pastors dressed up and, you know, celebrating this pagan holiday and whatnot. What church are you guys? So we, we were standing out, coming out from them yeah. and standing out. So like what church and this will like got me to like um, make like the jackets to like oh, say yeah. and then they're like oh how do we see when when we don't have tracks we don't have tracks but people have phones like take a picture you can watch it on YouTube or Facebook yeah and the same thing too like I had because uh, it was at nighttime started getting dark I put on um, reflective like these guys got on their on their things reflective so at night when the cars go by it would reflect and yeah. it said house arrest it says like YouTube and all that stuff so it gave you that information so I started hanging on my neck. Two flags, yeah. and then the next, and when the lights hit, they reflect and see who we were. And so well, that, that brings up an important point, because you might be watching, you're like, maybe you belong to a church, and you want to do this, and your church ain't doing it. I think it should start, you should talk to your the pastor, because, um, and, and, that, and that, that's kind of scary to say, man, because some pastors don't care, unfortunately. 
But you got to talk to your pastor and say, hey, I have, really, I have a real passion to go out and preach the gospel, but I'm just letting you know that I would like to send them here. This is my church. I want to send them here. You know, but if some, if some of you don't have a church, you now this is coming from me. I think it's you're, you're obligated to get that person's information mm -hmm. so you can disciple them, so you can lead them, so you can have a Bible study. I don't know what you guys think about that. That's just, or, I mean, yeah, they got to, they got to be discipled. You know, it's one thing to bring them to the Lord to pray for them, but who's going to show them? Yes. Yeah. You know? And that's why we put house arrest because that's a church. Yeah. That's what the tracks for. So like you were just speaking um, last, last week about uh, Lazarus, you know, you, you come out of the world, you lift it up, come out. And then I uh, was, I would call it, I would call it uh, hunting for mummies. Yeah. Hunting for mummies. <laughs> for mummy hunters for people around the world. They're still mummified. They said they're still wrapped up in the world. You know the old friends and uh, the the different addictions, alcoholism, drugs, or whatever, just whatever kept them in bond, or like you know, if they were even in Christ, too backsliding, whatever any of that, those are the the bandages that are surrounding on them, the wraps on them, and uh, that's why the discipling of bringing them to to a church that's really yeah. really for Christ, um, yeah, discipling them and getting them in Christ, getting them rooted, you know, cleaning them up, yeah. and you know, suited and booted, and maybe they'll find themselves out there if they feel that it's their calling. And it's, you know, I don't know, lack of words, a power by numbers, you know, we just go out there, mm -hmm. just holding the line, the more the merrier. So. But a lot, I, I would say this too, is that if you <clears throat> want to do this and you're alone, if it's, if you are really truly doing it unto the Lord, the Lord's not going to leave you alone. He's going to send people. Yes. How many times do people stop and they're like, hey, I'm a believer. Can I stand yes, here yes, with yes. you? We just got that yesterday now because one of our brothers in Merced Juan, um, he finds himself out there when I can't make it for whatever reason. I've, I've gone sick. Um, and I can't make it, but I let them know, hey, brother, I'm not going to be able to join you out there. But yeah. I feel some conviction when I can't make it out there. Uh, I, I, I leave off of work early, so I take a little blow on that, but that's the minimum. But he, when he's out there by himself, and when no one goes out there, then he finds himself out there still for his city because he cares that much about his city that yeah. he goes and evangelizes it by himself. So he, he gets prayed up and counts the cost, and he still goes out there and preaches mm -hmm. the gospel. Got mm -hmm. himself a speaker, got his flags, got his tracks, wow. got his little Bibles. Um, we got water, we got food, which is the minimal, you know, we don't, we don't got those uh, extra resources at that time over there, but we go to the dollar store, you know, got little snacks and stuff that are closed already, you don't have to worry about food handling. Yeah. So we just give them, you know, bags of chips and water, and while well, you're giving them that physically, we're giving them, hey, brother, you know, would you like some prayer though, too, as you give them a track, give them a track, the church, yeah. and that type of information, so, you know, some accept it, some don't, but at least they had an encounter, they can't say they were to perish or find themselves in front of judgment. They'll be like, I never knew about you. Yeah. You never told me about you. You'll be like, well, on this day, they told you, they offered you to let you know about me. You know, they were out there in the speaker letting you know, raising up my name. And, you know, yeah. just plant the seed and curiosity will take for us. And you, you, got, you go out there sometimes too, right? Yeah. It's, it hasn't been, it hasn't been a, uh, a while, but when I did go out, um, <clears throat> I started out as, as quiet and... Uh, <laughs> You know how, how you kind of said to him in the sermon that, that you would hide? Yeah. And when Joseph would like try to give it, that was me too. Yeah. I would like try to go to the other side of the street and, and hold a sign and be like, I don't want to say anything right now. Yeah. But um, then I would come back and, and yeah, he gave me the, the microphone and uh, I wasn't there. I was speaking yet too much, but I would pray yeah. out there. And um, I, like for real, I, it's, it's kind of funny that, that we're on this on top topic because um, since I've been away for a little bit, God has called me back, like, like saying, we need to go back out there. Yeah. Didn't you guys go to Lathrop? Didn't your mom join in? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And she was putting it down over there, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because you guys were doing at that alien. At the alien station. Uh, alien station. Alien and, and then, then we got that Target. Out of the corner. Yeah, in front of the Target too. And we the tar we had two different oh, locations. Oh, really? You guys? Yeah. And right there by Lathrop. River Island. Yeah. Yeah, kind of by the In-N-Out that area. Like, yeah, yeah. We, we were going out to Lathrop, and that's another thing too to like kind of be prepared for is we get uh, people trying to come against what we're doing, false doctrines, trying to preach that there's this right arts is wrong. Oh, that's, how do you deal with that? Because I mean, obviously, a lot of there's starting to pop up a lot of Hebrew Israelites. Yeah. And um, they can be very argumentative, unfortunately. I mean, the Lord loves them too, you know what I mean? But unfortunately, a lot of them are, can be very stubborn and argumentative. Mm -hmm. What do you do in a situation if they're trying to distract you? Because you're there for a short period of time to evangelize. Yeah. So how do you handle that with love? Um, 
the last one that came, um, he came out of his car. He, he was respectful, but at the same time, trying to kind of like be pushy. Yeah. And it's just like, hey, bro, look, we're not going to engage with you. It's a waste of time. It's a false doctrine with all due respect, you know? But um, we're, we're out here trying to save souls. We're not out here to debate. Yeah. And then he'll try to, uh, what do you mean false doctrine? It's in the scripture. Like I said, bro, like, it's a waste of time. We're not going to engage with you, bro. Just, yeah. You know, because we could sit there and go scripture for scripture all day long. And at the end of the day, he's not going to mm. come to Christ. Yeah. He, he's going to, he's just there to be a distraction from Satan. We, we get people like him. We get people throwing stuff at us. We get people thinking because they drive by saying they love Satan. It's going to stop us. Like, <laughs> you know, it's, we count it all joy. <laughs> yeah. We call persecution all joy. It's, it, it, is, it is a distraction. So when I see like a brother that was on the mic and they come, because they'll come after who's on the mic and, and I preach and they'll come because they'll stop as soon as they grab your attention yeah. or they want to get it or they come aggressively. Well, you have to be aware of your surroundings. So um, as soon as they do that, what I've done is if they're still holding the mic and they're like, they're gonna, I'll jump on the megaphone because I create the megaphone. So yeah. we start rebuking that in the name of Jesus and we come against it, any distraction of the enemy any of that just boom binding it and casting it back to wherever it's come from so um to the pits of hell so we just we just don't entertain it. we don't yeah. we don't have time for that we're hearing an assignment we're here for a short time and we're trying to reach as many people that we can because some people are never going to step into a church building mm -hmm. and we're not going to use that excuse that oh that this other religion came and distracted us lord from the assignment you yeah. gave us. what we're going to do is that when we get home we're going to pray for them too no matter what they're going through or whatever's keeping them in bondage or has them uh, blinded from whatever scripture says, then we're just going to find that and go about it, just pray for them and just love them, meet yeah. them where they're at. That's all, that's all we can do. And uh, not just get in our flesh when they're uh, coming with their attitudes or whatever it is. Because we, we deal with them in San Francisco too, and they're more yeah. deep down in the, in the bigger cities. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we just... We're well, at we that place too, uh, Ocean Beach, when we, when we went over there. Oh, yeah. Remember? Uh, where? Oceanside? The Ocean side? Yeah. yeah. I oh, went with went? them. Yeah, oh, well, we, we well, went to that pier. Aggressive. Yeah, one of the guys got a, got aggressive and, and was trying to get in their face, but he did. We, but we said we let them worry out, and then he yeah. asked us like to pray for him. He said he's been to Israel twice. That what your Jesus did for us, what has he done for us, what he did to begin with. You're breathing. <laughs> you're yeah. breathing. You're alive. Yeah. These are two things he's done for you. Like you need to count your blessings. Yeah. You wake up. You have two feet. You have two hands. There's people that are on wheelchair, on crutches, have <laughs> leg braces. <laughs> boots, <laughs> boots, you know, boots. <laughs> yeah, boots on, you know, to keep you walking. And you know, you, you, you obviously can. Are you here to debate? And first of all, we didn't come to you. You came yeah. to us, so you're looking for an encounter uh, about it. We didn't go to you. You came to us, so there's something you want. And he wanted to be like, oh, I read the Bible, this and that. I was like, yeah, what? I was like, atheists and other people read the Bible, but they read it as a book. They don't, they don't welcome the Holy Spirit. They don't pray on that. You, you know, you're not reading it with an open heart welcoming God to read it with you you know pray on it and he's like well nothing's happened I've asked for things and he's like well you're actually like from a, from a worldly perspective and are you still sinning are there some things that you are doing are, are you like yeah. not right have you got like baptized are, are you we're like what are you doing because right now you're already coming with doubt and like if you're coming with doubt like that we're like what's your faith because it says like if you have like a faith of a mustard seed you can tell that mountain to move but you're coming with all this doubt you're telling me you've been to Israel twice but you don't care about Jesus, then what do you do on Israel twice? And he's telling us that I don't believe in God, but then he says he has a pastor. And I was like, you're yeah, coming yeah, at you that was weird. Christ. You have a pastor. That was, that was weird. Was yeah, like, you oh, have a pastor. Now you have a pastor. And, 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 you know, we don't know who yeah. he is, but uh, what we're going to do is just, um, well, you, you, you need to look your pastor. Well, you guys need to, you know, one-on-one, yeah. -on -one, get with him and open that book again and welcome the Holy Spirit and, and go yeah. about it. But we told him we were still going to pray for you. And, uh, He's like, yeah, please pray for me. He said, can have an encounter. Have you guys ever had uh, somebody say, why are you out here shouting, whatever? Does Has it really done anything? Has anybody ever yes. said that? Yes. There's one guy right here. He's came several times. <laughs> like when he first started, I like, went out there. And he's like, six months. Where is he at? Where is he at? What are you guys doing? Just yelling. He's oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Six months. And I was like, the only reason, like, it's not a reason, but I just told him for him. I was like, we actually came back because you're not ready. And, and the way that you're with all that doubt and the lack of faith, oh, but he loves Jesus. you so much. Yeah. Because if he were to come right now and show up with his glory, you wouldn't even be shouting. You'd be on your face, drop like scripture, boom, you'd be bound. Yeah. And you're proclaiming that, that, that he is king and you will know. And with all that doubt and not accepting him into your life, yeah. they, they say people end up in hell because they reject the Holy Spirit and not accepting what he did on the cross for us. So you, uh, I mean, this is for me right now speaking. I was like, you wouldn't be fit for the kingdom right now. Yeah. And uh, if you're not fit for the kingdom, then 
You're like, you should be glad he hasn't came back yet. That's what I, and I tell him, because my brother told me that too. Yeah. And I was like, if you were to show up with the full glory, you were not going to be an heretic. And that's why he's such a loving and humble God and such a, a gentleman that he's still giving you time. Wow. Yeah, so. Yeah, we, we can sit there and debate with people, but then you think about all the good things that have happened since we've yeah. been out there. Mm-hmm. There was there was a time when we were on Paradise, and um, we were just outreaching. And I remember I seen a guy walking towards us. He was walking really slow. And then it was like, all right, well, when he comes by, I'm going to hand him a flyer. I'm going to tell him Jesus loves him, and you know we'll preach the gospel to him or whatever. And the guy took forever. I kept looking back, and he was taking forever. Finally, he came, and he, he said to us, he was like, um, I just want to say thank you. And I was like, what? He, and he was saying, I was sitting over there, and I was crying, and I was feeling sorry for myself, and just just beating myself up. And then I heard your guys' music, and I hear you guys preaching, wow. and it encouraged me, and I just want to come say thank you. Wow. And so we, we started preaching the gospel to him. And then about four of us got around him, and we, we asked him, do you, you know, do you want prayer? What can we pray for you about? And he says, you know, just my life, my situation, this, that. He said, I got this pain in my side. And we, uh, we laid hands on him, and we prayed, and he walked away. And maybe three minutes later, we get a text message. He said, hey, I just want to let you know, um, I don't know what you guys did, and honestly, I'm a little freaked out right now. <laughs> said, but the pain in my hip is gone. Amen. It's gone. I'm walking normal. And it's, so it's like, that's why we're out there. That's why we're out there to allow Jesus to reach his people. It's not about us. It's not about the debates and winning arguments. It's about giving Jesus an opportunity to reach his people. Giving them all you know, glory. Witches, no. witches have come out on I am Nice Street. I remember no. a, a woman pulled up all crazy and she had her daughter in the back seat. And um, she was like, can I get prayer? You know, just look worried like somebody was chasing her. And I was like, yeah, we called the sisters over and the sisters got around her. They were casting demons out of that woman right there. Wow. She was, uh, she was oh, I remember that. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. I wasn't there, but I remember you guys telling me. Yeah, she was involved uh, in, in witchcraft heavily. And, and the, right there on I-9 Street, the sisters casted those demons out. And Jesus moved. That's why we're out there. So when we're wasting our time debating, we're missing out on an opportunity to reach somebody. Now, on this end, in the church, I have seen... Sister Raven, you guys met her out there. Yep. That's fruit because she is now, um, now not only is she in the evangelistic team, but she's also leading the um, the the unsheltered program here. Yep. And she came from you guys evangelizing. Yep. We have um, uh, who else? Um, I've had somebody else in my mind right now. There's, well, there's those sisters from Manteca, oh, yeah. the twins. Yeah. So basically, um, Frank and Diana evangelize on Saturdays in Manteca, right? Friday and Saturdays, you go evangelize. Yeah, and um, they brought these two young 15-year-olds or 14-year-olds, both of them bound uh, by demonic oppression, and they came and got delivered, and now they're serving God, yeah. the two young girls. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else has oh. came out of that. I believe Vince and uh, his wife, the new brother Vincent. Yeah. Him and his wife met Frank and Diane in, in Saul. Oh, that's Mexico. right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, bro, so, bro. so there is, there's fruit, guys. There's fruit, and, and people that come and then they get evangelized too. Then they come and then they get discipled and and they get to learn the word of God here. And it was beautiful. Is then they go back and reach for more. Yeah. And not just that, like we get people that like we post on on social media, right? And we get people from out of town reaching out to us. Hey. Can we get our flags? We want to start an evangel- uh, evangelizing team and do what you guys are doing. Yeah. You know, um, we had family members. Hey, they see what we're doing. Can you guys come and pray for this person? You know, can you get like just just by being out there and making ourselves available to God, God is able to reach people. And yeah. it's, it's just simply getting past yourself and, and allowing God to do what he has to do. Yeah. You gotta be willing, willing and then you don't got to be the best. You just got to be willing yeah. and surrender yourself to Jesus Christ and let the Holy Spirit work through you and God will, will do the rest. Yeah. You just got to be willing and as, as you let the Holy Spirit work, you're not the best, but it's progress. You'll, you'll see the progress yeah. and you just come and chai. Yeah. <laughs> coming and chai, some guy's barely tithing, but look, we're out there. We act, like, there's a story right now, which heard of how we came into house arrest and yeah. I don't know, we're out there and, and coming to a city near you. <laughs> you know, Don, oh, go ahead. Oh, say that's, um, one of the things, too, is if you want to come out, you don't have to come out, and, and we're not going to expect you to get on the microphone the first day. Yeah. You know, some people, they, they, they come out, and they'll just hold a flag over their face. Some people come, and they'll just sing worship uh, to themselves. Some people come, and they pray for people. We had uh, the sister and her daughter come. Um, 
And the first day they came, they stood like all the way in the back of the parking lot. <laughs> and then eventually they made their way to the corner, you know. And, yeah. and then uh, last Monday they were out there. They had like a whole side of the street with just their family out there wow. screaming Jesus. That's tight. You yeah. know, so it's just come out and just experience it. See what God does. It's beautiful. You feel the Holy yeah. Spirit. You'll see it if you work. Yeah, and, and uh, Sundays also we want to start um, mm-hmm. after regular service. We want to start going out there and uh, evangelizing um, with with Spanish worship to yeah. try to bring in the. the well, the flyers come in Friday. Nice. So, so you, you, yeah. you guys come for service and you want to stick around and help out, come hold the flag. Come yeah. on. We didn't order the 5000 I ordered 1500 because I have a feeling, because uh, we don't have a Spanish Bible study. We don't have Spanish youth. Uh, but I, it's, I came into my mind but it's coming. It's coming. So I didn't want to make 5000 flyers. I'm like, these first 1500 because it just talks about, um, pretty much it shows the, the grocery giveaway. <coughs> And then Sunday service, it's, it's that's it, yeah. you know, and um, and then the YouTube channel. So it just talks about those three things, but I'm like, I don't want to get 5,000 of them because I have a feeling we're going to have a Spanish Bible study, we're going to have a Spanish youth, and have to remake them. And then we remake them. Yeah. So I figured we're going to get rid of these 1,500, fill this place out, and then make them, you know. Yeah. We, we work for a strategic guy. Yeah, so we're going to, yeah, so guys... Um, if you know a Spanish speaker, if you speak Spanish, make sure you subscribe to House of Rest and Espanol. It's a whole different YouTube channel. And um, we want to build that channel up. Right now, there's like 14 subscribers. <laughs> That's it. You know, this channel, we have 10,966 subscribers. We're going to hit 11,000. But if, you, if you're Spanish speaking, because I don't, I don't want you to subscribe just because you feel sorry for us and you don't even know a lick of Spanish. <laughs> we want to have subscribers that, that know the language, you know? And so that way I know it's a true, you know, you, know, you guys know what I mean. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, check that channel out. And, and the TikTok uh, for the live stream. Oh, the TikTok. <laughs> guys, so Joseph started a TikTok uh, out there when they're evangelizing. How long ago did you do that? Uh, it's been at least a year, maybe longer. Over, yeah. So apparently, TikTok lets us go live um, for services with 10,000 subscribers. So Joseph handed the TikTok over to us for the church to take over, basically, and continue. Right now, it has 8,205 subscribers. All we need is 1,795 more and we can live stream our services, not only on YouTube, not only on Facebook, but also on TikTok. So all three of them at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then I, I bought another camera. Somebody donated money. That's why I went to San Francisco earlier today to pick up a camera. Mm-hmm. And um, we're going to be setting that up. So by Sunday, you're going to see another new angle from the church service. And that's, that's a blessing, man. The brother that donated that was a blessing. Um, Thank you. Those cameras can be pricey, but somebody had one used, you know, and uh, it was perfect, you know. So we gotta set that up. Yeah. Did you give him the name? What's that? TikTok channel. Oh no. Was it House of, House of Rest Church one one? Yeah. Those yeah, House of Rest Church. Just all just House of Rest Church, and um, yeah, follow us on there. It's cool. You know what I mean? There's a lot of evangelizing. A lot of the stuff that they're talking about is is on here. And then I'm starting to add a few little things here and there uh, with sermon stuff, but yeah, it's it's gonna be good, man. You know, and I want to hit that ten thousand so we can start live streaming. That's gonna be awesome. On there, you know. So el TikTok en español. Ahora suscríbanse, suscríbanse, denle like. Y para toda la gente, si tienen familia que habla español, está el House of Rest en español y se da la palabra, la palabra de Dios en español. Para todos los abuelos, tíos y parientes que no hablan inglés. Yeah, what he said. (laughs) (laughs) Well, guys, it's getting late. It's now uh, 11.06. I just wanted to, I knew I was going to have time to to do a devotional, but we'll have just a little conversation, you know, and something for you guys to listen to in the morning. It's uh, Tuesday night for us. No, Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday for us, Thursday morning for you guys. And um, hopefully you're having uh, waking up to a great, great day. The fact that you woke up, better thank God. Because yeah. <laughs> every breath we have, every heartbeat, we're one heartbeat away 
um, from not being here, guys. And God gives us that heartbeat. God gives us that breath of air. And uh, so you, if, if you're breathing, you always have something to thank God for. You know, so anything else? Que Dios los bendiga, los cuide siempre. God bless you. We love you. Come here, your family. That's it. <laughs> Brother? Love you guys. <laughs> All right, guys. See you later.